Hey everybody, welcome to my Pete and Pole Air Camper slash RV7 YouTube video channel. Thanks for stopping by, I appreciate it. If you've been here before and you've looked at some of the other videos, you've probably noticed the long, boring uh, introduction at the beginning of each one. I am redoing that now. I just want to cut it down, keep it nice and short and sweet and to the point. So again, welcome. Uh, one thing I also wanted to make note of is I'm going to include uh, some contact information for those who have questions and uh, would potentially like some help with their project. Um, haters, don't waste your time. I am Johnny on the spot with the delete button and I will delete your email post haste and not even read it. So don't waste my time. Don't waste yours. Uh, anybody else looking for some help, advice, have questions, concerns, whatever, you will now be able to contact me directly. Um, I'm quite regular on email, um, so I should be able to get a response to you relatively quick. I've got a ton of photographs for both aircraft, so if, if you need some clarification on something, chances are I've got detailed photographs and I'll be able to help you out. Let's see, other than that, uh, I think that's it. I'm going to keep this short. Um, oh. Again, if, uh, if, if you like what you see and uh, you want to help me out uh, to get through my RV7 build project, uh, you can visit my GoFundMe. Just do a search for Caretaker Arrow. That's Caretaker with a K. I also have a, um, an Amazon wish list. There's some pieces, parts in there that I could use. Again, if you feel moved enough to help me out, it'd be greatly appreciated. Or if you want to just contact me directly, um, you know, we can, we can talk about whatever, and um, so I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, thanks for coming by. I appreciate it, and uh, again, hopefully you'll find these videos worth your time, and um, that's that. So let's get back to building, and I am now going to shut up, and uh, I'll talk to you later. I've been struggling with a way to explain how I'm doing my main landing gear and hopefully I can do this relatively quick and you'll understand what it is I'm trying to say. What I've got set up now are these piece, pieces of uh, oak that are seat clamped to the front of the fuselage. Of course I've got the soft spruce. Uh, covered up with these pieces of plywood so the seat clamps don't damage the, uh, sp the spruce. Of course I've got the same setup on both sides. This is just my adjustment so I can lift the front of the fuselage up off of the floor. I have my reference line still on the floor. I've got my plumb bob I've got my reference line on the fuselage, my center reference line on the fuselage here, and I've got another one up here which you can't see because the string is blocking it. So I've got the plumb, bro the plumb bob blah, 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 hung off of the center line of the fuselage and I have it lined up with the reference mark on the floor. And then if you follow me on back, I've got my tail post physically on the floor and I have my reference line here still on the tail post and that is in line with this reference line here that's on the floor. Um, you can ignore these two red lines. What you probably cannot see is I've got another red line right across the bottom of the tail post. It's drawn on the tape. It's right here on the bottom. And that's just a reference line for me just to check and make sure that the fuselage hasn't slid back and forth at all. This is my reference line here to make sure that this hasn't slid at all. Now, um, this is where it gets a little confusing. The wheels that I am going to use, basically let me just put it to you this way. The wheels, the tires, the axles, all of that when it is assembled and in place mounted onto this block this is this is going to be the ash block that the axle actually rests on 
that wheel and tire assembly roughly is 24 inches in diameter. Since the axle is going to sit on here and the axle resides halfway across that wheel diameter, that 24 inches divided in half is 12 inches. So, my tail wheel assembly, just completely by coincidence, from the ground up to the bottom of the tail post, this distance here is also 12 inches. So, if I had my tail post on the floor, and I have this wood block here on the floor for the axle, which represents the, the middle of the wheel assembly, I can set up my deck angle using these oak supports to give me the deck angle that I want and what I'm looking for is about 10 degrees. It's just a personal preference. So now if I build my wood struts to go from the fuselage down to this block here that represents the, the ash block that the axle sits on and then another wood strut from here down to the ash block with it sitting on the floor. When I put my wheel assembly, when I get this all built and I get my wheel and my axle assembly attached to this, it's going to raise the fuselage up off the ground that 12 inches from the center of the axle down to the bottom of the tire. That's roughly 12 inches because the whole assembly is 24. So the fuselage is going to get raised up 12 inches in the front and when I get my tailwheel assembly back underneath the bottom, that as well is going to be raised up 12 inches. So this overall deck angle will not change and it should maintain that 10 degrees. So with it set up this way, I can work with everything on the floor. I don't have to deal with axles. I don't have to deal with wheels and tires and spokes and, and all that stuff. I've got the fuselage reference to my center mark across the floor. I've got my tail assembly uh, on that same center line and I've got that red line drawn across the back so I can make sure that the fuselage doesn't move this way. And since that reference line is drawn down the center of the uh, cracks <clears throat> between the tile, and these are uh, 12 inch tiles, <clears throat> I can use this line here, <clears throat> which is a, another crack, this represents the uh, edge of the fuselage. And of course the next, the next square over from this line going that way, that's where the edge of the fuselage is because the, the fuselage is 24 inches wide. So measuring off of that line, which represents the edge of the fuselage, I have come up with a distance of, what did I say this was? 48 inches. So basically from the center line of the fuselage I've come over one, two feet, which is right here. Okay, so my ash block is going to go on the outside of that line, like this, roughly. So that gives me this, this span from this block to the other block of four feet. I'm making my gear a little wider. The plan, I think the plan dimension is 42 and a half or something like that. I'm making my gear roughly six inches wider. <clears throat> and I'm also, <clears throat> excuse me, man, every time I try to make a video, I lose my voice. <clears throat> also, I'm moving the, uh, the location of the axle in relation to the firewall, I'm moving it back about three inches. So from the uh, from the front of the, from the firewall back, I put a little tick mark here in red. That's 20 inches. I think I think the plans show it at 17, but I'm moving mine further aft. So this is 20 inches here. I made another reference mark here. That's 20 inches back from the firewall. 
and using a piece of wood, if I run a piece of wood from this mark down through this mark and on down to the floor, it ends up hitting the tape right here. So where it hits the tape, I made a mark and then I drew this reference line here. This represents the center of the axle. So the center of the axle is now 20 inches back from the firewall. That's all this tape is for, basically. So to recap real quick, one more time. Plumb bob on the reference marks of the fuselage in line with the reference line on the floor, which represents center. That reference line runs down to the tail. The center line of the tail is also on that mark. I've got a red mark across the back of the tail post so I can reference it to make sure that the fuselage doesn't slide around fore and aft. I've got my level across the front of the fuselage to maintain level from side to side. And I've got my deck angle set at 10 degrees. When I put my wheel assembly onto this assembly, it's going to raise the fuselage up roughly 12 inches in the front, but my tail assembly being 12 inches will also raise the tail up in the back 12. So that will maintain that 10 degrees, roughly, which is a personal preference. Some people like to go as much as 13. I want to stay closer to 10. I've got the tape marks on the floor, which represents this, this line here is where the ash block is going to go. And that is exactly two feet. This is the line here between my tiles. This is one foot. And then on over is two feet. So I've got two feet on this side, two feet on the other side. That gives me a four foot stance, if you will. And then the ash block then will go on that line and you can see I've got these this is that 20 inch setback from the firewall reference this is just basically the diameter of the axle and I transferred that onto my wood as well okay so now basically what I'm going to do is anchor this to the floor somehow so that it doesn't move around and I'm going to start making my struts to go from the fuselage down to this block. So that's pretty much where I'm at at the moment. And as I continue to build and continue to get things figured out, I will continue to videotape, assuming I don't forget. So far this landing gear has been a, a trial in patience more than anything else. I believe I finally got one strut made, but I'll come back to that here in a moment. What you're looking at is a block that I'm using to uh, simulate the uh, white ash block that the two legs meet at. Um, one thing that I found, and at this time I don't know if it's going to prove to be um, worthwhile doing or not, or if it will have any other impact on the rest of the landing gear, but a lot of people have problems cutting the angles that are required for the back leg, the rear leg that goes from the back of the block back to the fuselage. And I had problems with the angles as well. So what I elected to do was to cut the ash block at an angle. And I cut mine at this is a 35 degree angle. And what that does then that allows the angle that needs to be cut on the leg itself to be not as great and you can cut it with uh, a miter saw or a table saw uh, easier because the angles fall within the range of the tool. So I don't know if that's going to impact anything else at the moment. I checked with the metal fittings and they fit. The, the thin part of the metal fitting that goes, that attaches to this block, it attaches to the block here and then comes up this leg and comes up this leg. That piece is only like an inch, inch and an eighth wide across the bottom. So this smaller, this smaller dimension of the block right here is inch and an eighth. So the metal fitting will fit right onto here. And then I'll just drill through here, through this side, and put the mating fitting on. I'm not at that point quite yet, but 
this is what I have done so far. And I was able to finally get the leg made, this rear one. The rear ones are the hardest ones to make, I believe, because of the angles involved. There's, there's such steep angles that come out of here and come out of here. And of course, they're compound cut, which makes it all kinds of good fun. Since I don't have my plywood sides on, I just put a piece of eighth inch plywood here where the strut mounts to, uh, again, just to act like, to take to, man, if I could only speak English. This again is to uh, simulate the, the plywood side being in place because the leg, well, here, let me grab, here it comes, okay. The leg needs to mount like this, even with, even with the plywood. If I were to make it even with the bottom of the fuselage like this, and then put the plywood sides on, the plywood sides would overlap it like that. So you want to have the leg even with the plywood. Since I don't have the plywood in place, I just C-clamp this piece to uh, take up the gap, so to speak. And then this goes on down to my block like this. Okay, I can't really give you any hints or tips, unfortunately, at this time for cutting the compound angles on those legs. Uh, like I said, the only thing that I did to help make it a little easier was to cut this at an angle. And I was able to get the other angles on the uh, leg cut. Uh, just using regular compound miter settings. I didn't have to make any kind of fancy jigging or anything like that. So I, I went very, very slow and I made sure I cut the leg nice and long. And then I just started working my way back until I got the, the dimension that I wanted. Now what I had done here, after a lot of fooling around, almost two days worth, I couldn't get my block to sit parallel to this line like I wanted. Um, the angles are just odd enough on that rear leg that um, I couldn't get this block to sit, let me spin this around, to sit even with this line like I'd wanted to. So when it was all said and done and I was just about ready to ruin all my spruce that I had ordered, I figured I would just go ahead with uh, the best case scenario and it ended up being a little bit of an angle and this outline here is just a reference for the block itself so rather than being here and parallel with my reference line it's actually here and it's angled a little bit so you can see here it's inboard a little bit of the line and then on this other end which you probably can't see it's just about right on the line so it does, it does, I'm trying to work this camera one handed, it, it does, rather than being parallel with the fuselage, it does point in toward the tail post, but it's ever so slightly. It's nothing like what the plans call for. The other thing is that I've got the block, I've got the block here up on a block. And the reason for that is the deck angle of the fuselage is roughly 10 degrees. With this being on the ground, the block, when the plane is sitting on the ground, would be parallel to the ground. When the plane is in flight, the fuselage then would be level, so then this block would drop 10 degrees. So I just put this block in here to kind of split the difference. I wanted this at 5 degrees, but it ended up being about 7. So on the ground, like you see it now, when the plane's on the ground, this block will have a seven degree tilt up. And then in flight, it will have about a three degree down tilt. Does it matter? Probably not, but it's just something that I wanted to pay attention to. So with all that said, I'm gonna call that first back strut finished. Well, finished for now, the rough cutting and I'm going to get to work on my front piece, the front strut. So I, like I said, I've got these reference lines. If I keep this block on these red reference lines that I redrew, then I should be able to uh, 
get my front strut fitted to it. And since it's here in place, uh, in accordance with these red reference lines, the rear strut will, will come down and, and mate with it, no problem. Okay. Let me get some more wood cut, and uh, hopefully in a day or two I can come back with that front one done. I don't recall if I covered how I uh, marked the locations for my landing gear fittings where they attach to the fuselage, so I'm going to do that now. What you see here is the location of the forward uh, landing gear mount. Back here is the ash piece. Now you want your landing gear brackets to bolt to this ash piece on the inside. They've got a bolt in here. So what I did was I just simply carried this edge all the way across and made a reference mark and then I did the same with this edge. I just carried this edge all the way across, made a reference mark. On this front fitting, let's see, the easiest way that I found to do that was to just use a, a straight edge and, and put it on the edge of the, uh, the ash piece and then you can mark your reference line. And then, the, and then I did the same thing on this side. You just put the Put the straight edge on the on the ash piece and then mark a reference line and then of course you can check the dimension you measure the width of your ash piece and make sure that it matches your reference marks now the rear piece is a little bit more difficult because the filler blocks are a lot wider than where the ash piece rests so you can't just simply carry this uh, edge over and mark it because this block is in the way. So what I had done, and I don't know if I can get the camera in here, get these pieces out of the way. What I had done was to basically, I looked at this block face and this edge of this plywood are on the same plane. This is nice and even here. So I just took a measurement from the edge of the plywood to the edge of the ash piece. I just took this measurement here from this edge to this edge. And then I came around front and I measured that same distance from here and marked the line. And then I did the same thing for the back. Hopefully this is all in focus. The edge of this, the face of this block and the edge of the plywood are flush. So I took a measurement from, from here, from this face, out to here. And then I came around and I did that same measurement from here back. And then, of course, you can check your measurement between the lines to make sure that it's the same as the width of your ash piece. Actually, what I actually did was, like I had said, I'd, I'd marked this line just like I had said I had marked it. And then I just took the width of the uh, ash from that mark and made this mark. And then I double-checked it with this measurement. So... Now these represent where the um, landing gear fittings need to attach. They need to attach in this area here, both on the rear and on the front. And then that will guarantee that the brackets that get put on the back will, will fall right here on the ash piece just like they need to be. So after some fooling around, trial and error, I was able to get these four gear legs made. What I had chosen to do was to work with on one side of the airplane and I would make a leg, I would get it to fit the way that I wanted it to fit and then I would go ahead and make the same leg for the opposite side right away since I already had the, the uh, angles on the 
various tools already set. Uh, the only thing that I would recommend doing here is to uh, take your time and go slow and make sure when you cut the, uh, the leg for the opposite side that it is a mirror image of the piece that you have cut. As you see here, these are mirror images. And you can see if I flip this off of here like that. Oh, that's really about it. That's as far as I've gotten. You're looking at about uh, two days worth of work just getting these four legs made. Now, I, I'm taking a little bit of a gamble here with cutting the, uh, the opposite side legs uh, just in faith. In other words, I, I try to fit one side of the fuselage. So I, I make this leg and I make the same I make the back leg for the same side. So I make these two legs here um, and actually fit them to the block that I have on the floor and to the fuselage. And when I'm happy with that, I make the other leg to match. The only problem with that is I have not trial fit these, the legs for the opposite side. Um, banking on the fact that I've got the fuselage on the center line, I've got it square, I've got it set, and I built the fuselage physically square and true enough that even without trial fitting, these legs should fit. That's a, that's a risk that I'm willing to take at this point, but uh, once I get further along, I will find out if that was true and I will let you know. Hello again everybody and as usual thanks for coming by. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it worthy and uh, again as always hopefully you found something that was uh, worth your time. So thanks again for stopping by and again making this short and sweet. Um, I've got contact information available now, so if you feel the need to uh, help me out with my RV7 project, uh, feel free to email me, or you can go to my GoFundMe, as I said in the beginning, at, uh, just do a search for Caretaker Arrow. That's Caretaker with a K, and again, I've got the uh, Amazon uh, wish list. And uh, for you RV7 guys and girls out there, if, uh, if you watch these videos and are moved to uh, purchase an RV kit of your own, if you'd include my build number with your first order, Vans will uh, give me a hundred bucks. Um, it's kind of like a referral, I guess. So uh, if you were to do that, I would greatly appreciate it. It's no money out of, out of your pocket. It's just something Vans does as an incentive. So as I said, if you decide to build and you order your first kit, if you'd include my builder number, I'd appreciate it. And all this contact information will be in the description of each video. So check out the description and uh, do what you feel you need to do. And uh, I would appreciate any help. And again, if you need some further assistance, contact me. I've got photographs. I've got videos. We can communicate directly. And uh, hopefully I can give you some further guidance if you want it. So that's it. Again, thanks for stopping by. Come back uh, frequently. I try to do a video or two um, every week if I can. So uh, subscribe, keep coming back, and uh, I will talk to you again soon. All right, thanks.